hello, hello, everybody. Let's see. All right, now you will be able to hear me. Um, it's an external mic. Sometimes the interface doesn't work, and that's why you can't hear me. Um, I assume you can hear me now. So welcome, everybody. I, um, I'm reading all of your questions. Thank you, Josh. Uh, I'm reading all your questions. The, of course, we're going to have um, everybody in the cast on at some point. Um, I know Patty has a new book out, so I'm hoping that she can schedule permitting, uh, join us and talk about her new, uh, book that has been released. Uh, that will be fun as usual. Um, there's a couple questions right off the bat that I, you know, when you guys write your, uh, questions, sometimes I don't get to it or sometimes I read it and I go, okay, let me answer that live because it's going to be a much, um, it's going to be a much more detailed answer that I can give you. So somebody, first of all, there was a quick one, which is, if you noticed, I put up a photo of Good Girls, the Good Girls episode, and uh, Phil is kind of in a crouched position, and he, um, you know, is giving a pretty intense note, and to the right of him, to the left on the photo, Jeremy Stevens, who's one of our writers, is wearing a hat that says brother. And at the beginning of the series, Ray would, um, Ray would give every writer who wrote an episode a custom hat. So for every name of the episode, and what's funny, and I've commented on this before, we, know, we knew internally what an episode was called, but before the advent of DVRs, that would not be stated uh, for the most part, maybe in TV Guide or something, but now when you have the selection, you see the names of the episode. So uh, the name of the episode didn't mean much to the public up until a certain point. And so Ray would give that name, sometimes if it was a longer one, a longer name of an episode, it would be quite a lot of lettering on the hat. Um, but I, and so the question was somebody, hello everybody, I'm waving back to, yes, it's so good to see you. So good to see you. Such great fans. Uh, the, uh, the question was, how many of those hats do I have? And I don't know because Ray stopped doing it after a while. And I don't know why he stopped doing it. I don't remember exactly. I'll have to ask Ray. Uh, and I think, you know, Ray and I wrote the season one finale together. Ray and I wrote a bunch of episodes together. So I don't know. And I don't know if anybody would know. I'll have to ask when we have one of the other writers uh, uh, on. Uh, and also, a lot of people have mentioned the book, which I have right here. Um, so the book, uh, there is the book, in case uh, any of you want to see it. And we talked about it a lot uh, with David Wilde last week, which um, he is such a great guess because he's, if you, he might have looked familiar to you because if you see any retrospective on music or this is the 70s, this is the 80s on CNN, he would always be, um, he would always be there as a, as a, uh, a great commenter on, you know, where things fit in the world. So even though David didn't work on the show, um, he had a really unique perspective on the show, and, you know, he's become a good friend of Phil's, which is um, very good. Great. Uh, Teresa, I see you bought the book, which is great. Um, who came up with the opening titles? Oh, in the book, I can't find it anywhere. Yeah, who came up with the intros? Uh, I believe Phil uh, did most of them, if not all of them, and I'll have to ask Phil. Phil about that. Um, the book is, you know, the book is out of print, so you're going to have to go on eBay or Amazon or wherever to find it. And I know for some of you 
uh, who got the book, um, I will tell you why it ends mid-season um, eight. So the Friends book, by contrast, they had a planned when the was going to... Um, when the series was going to end, uh, there was no deliberation. So for On Everybody's Raymond, uh, and I think I've touched upon this before, On Everybody's Raymond, we were going to end, we, basically Phil and Ray, were going to end at season eight. And so they, the book publisher, which was Simon Schuster, said, if you're going to end at season eight, you have to get, basically, the photos to China by December. And then the book will be printed and on the shelves before the series ends. So we, we, and I laid out the book and most of the photos are mine, we had to finish the book in December and send all of our uh, um, negatives out to be printed. And so that's why if you do get the book and you go, why isn't it only half of season eight and not all of season nine, uh, that is why. Uh, but it's a great book, and I think – I don't want to talk about it too much because uh, most of you don't have the book. But if you, if you see the – you know, on the inside of the book, the, the, the beauty is on all of the photos, you see a description. Oh, this, this is a random one I just picked out. So that with Peter Boyle holding the milk carton against his forehead, that is something that happened uh, to Phil in real life where – Phil's father was worried about something and held a cold carton of milk to his head. But you can see there's handwritten uh, description of the pictures in there. And those were all done by Phil and Ray, uh, um, which gave it such um, authenticity because a lot of times there are outside authors who are hired to write um, – to write a book that, and they really aren't a part of the series per se. Uh, we also did have H Heather Haverleski did write uh, a, a portion of the book as well, and she was she was great as well. Ah, uh, yes, time to update the book. Yeah, it is a good time to update the book. I'm going to talk to Phil actually, because we could. I obviously have pictures taking it to the end, so I would um, endeavor to see if Ray and Phil would. Um, finish the book, which we can. We absolutely can. We probably can't do it officially through Simon & Schuster. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, we could check into that, but uh, it's possible. So another uh, – hello. I'm waving to everybody. So good to see all these people. Now, some, some of you uh, – uh, uh, some Instagram followers, obviously, you don't have your name, so I'd like to acknowledge you, but – it's very hard when it's a funny name that I can't pronounce, but it's not even a name. It's just a couple of numbers and something else. Um, but I did, uh, I don't know if anybody was following that thread, but if you watch Exporting Raymond, which is Phil's story of trying to do Everybody Loves Raymond in Russia, which I recommend to everybody. A a anybody who just wants to be entertained, especially if you're following Phil on Somebody Feed Phil, that's phenomenal. Hello, Karen. Yes, I'm saying hello. <laughs> Great. You see the problem, though. A lot of people don't have a first name, and then you have to, who knows what you have to guess. Um, so if you follow Phil, you'll love how it goes on Exporting Raymond, but... Uh, uh, I won't give it away, but it's really, really worth watching if you get a chance. Now, the uh, the way that kind of worked was Sony had the rights to Everett's Raymond. So what they decided to do is they decided, you know what, we're going to try and shoot this series in different countries using actors from that country. And so this way it'll be more relatable to the you know, to the population, and it won't be subtitled, so it'll be, um, uh, you know, it'll be easier. You don't have to read the whole thing. So Phil was the first one to try and adapt it, and that was in Russia. And uh, you'll, if you watch the documentary, you'll see uh, he has a tough time of it, but it kind of works out well, and I think next time we have Phil on, I'll let him tell you about where it is today. Um 
The uh, show was attempted in India, and it was attempted in many other countries. So this was this is what's great about Instagram. I asked somebody from India, said hi from India, and so I said, oh, she said uh, I love the show, and so I asked her. Um, about the series that they made there using the native actors. And she said, yes, they shot, uh, I don't know if she said how many, and I don't know that she knows how many, but they didn't react to it. The population didn't react to it. And I think, uh, not to take away from the actors that are in other countries, because how would we know how talented or not talented they are, but the chemistry of a cast. I mean, if you tried to reshoot Friends, without Jennifer Aniston and Courtney Cox and the whole cast in other countries, could it work? Possible. But so much of the show is the chemistry of the cast. And I was told years ago by an executive at CBS, and she said, you can have a series on the air that has a um, mediocre writing and a phenomenal cast, but it can't go the other way. The phenomenal cast is really the essential element of a show. And I'm saying this as a writer, but we saw how important um, our actors were when, um, when somebody else had to step in for them. Not that they weren't, uh, not that they weren't good. So uh, um, more questions throughout the week. So somebody asked about... Um, yeah, sorry, about the twins. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to help, uh, I'm trying to follow along and you get behind in questions. So just real quickly, yes, Ray's real twins did not play the twins in the series. Ray has twins, their name, uh, Gregory and Matthew. They changed after the pilot. The twins in the series are brother and sister, obviously in real life, uh, sorry, they're brothers in real life, and their sister, Madeline Sweeten, played Allie. So it really worked out, so it was just, um, it was just a really, uh, it was good because you only had one stage family, which is less stressful uh, on the family. And yes, that's a great one. Were they dressed up at gir as girls? Uh, I believe the first season in the flashback episode uh, that Ray and I wrote called Why Are We Here?, uh, they put um, one of the twin boys in pigtails or something. Uh, that's a great point. Boy, that's really obscure and uh, excellent. Excellent for that. Hello. Um, so somebody, um, yes, they're all siblings, the Sweetens, uh, some, who were f so nice on the set. I mean, they were really little kids. Maddie obviously was a little bit older, but... Um, they were really, really nice kids, and um, I think we touched upon, th upon this. They have to go to school on the set. So we didn't, it's not like they're sitting there hanging around, you know, you, you basically saw them for rehearsal, and then you didn't see them, and then they would come, you know, for a show night, of course, and then you, you would, so it's not like they were just sitting around uh, watching all day. They were, they were, unfortunately for them, they had to go to school every day. Um, so the, uh, yes, the, the, I want to talk about one of the questions. Um, someone asked, what happens when you have a story? Uh, do you, um, basically how long does it take to it go from, Hey, I have a great idea to it becoming a, an episode. And, you know, Phil, who was the showrunner, had a very, very specific um, idea of how the show should work. So Phil had a lot of experience, and what he found was, and he kind of learned this or patterned it after Carl Reiner, who unfortunately just passed away, which is you need to have a life to write about life. So Phil was very, very adamant about having people leave at a certain time and have a reasonable hours. And the way that plays into it is Phil made sure that we were very well ahead of writing the script. So if you had an idea, March 1st, uh, you would say, hey, Phil, I have this idea. And you would be in the writer's room and the idea would be talked about. 
in the writer's room, and you would what's known as break the story. Breaking the story means you're going through each element of the story and you're trying to figure out. And once the story is broken, and that takes, you know, that should take a day, if it's a good story, it should take a whole day uh, within reason to figure out. Then you, the writer, you write something called a two-pager. And a two-page is an outline of what happens in each scene. So if you think about your favorite episode, the baggage episode, or something, you think, okay, this is this happens in this scene, then this happens that scene, and you just write the least amount of um, the least amount. You don't write dialogue. You just write, you know, Deborah comes in, they have a fight about this, and then you know Deborah exits. Then the next scene, there's a suitcase sitting there. So you break it down into two pages. Then you go back into the writers' room, and everybody reads it, and now you go over that again, and you make sure that everything works still because at that point. And I would say this for anybody who's aspiring to be a writer. Um, if you're trying to write, you, you, the tendency is like, I want to write. I want to write pages. I want to write pages. But what happens is if the story doesn't work, then you have to throw out these pages that you worked very hard on. And it breaks your heart. So you're like, well, I'm going to keep that scene and keep that scene. And if it doesn't work, and you as the audience knows... If you go to a movie and you're like, this is great, and then halfway through it, you're completely bored and you're tuned out, the story's not working. Even if they have the wittiest dialogue and you're like, wow, it looks great. If the story doesn't work, so that's why on Raymond, per how Phil ran the room, you made sure that the story really worked perfectly um, before you wrote any dialogue. And so once that process happen, meaning the two pager and it could be two weeks, could be three weeks, then you would have, let's say, a week or two weeks to actually write the script. So really the fastest that anybody could write a script uh, would be six weeks to eight weeks. That's how far ahead that it was, um, it was, you know, it was prepared. So, um, okay, let's see. Let's go back and scroll through these great questions. I love it. Um, let me see. Great question. Great question. Yes. Madeline, great. Kids, great. Fantastic. Um, yes. Patty in the car giving birth. Um, that was a Tucker episode, I believe. Um, uh, we'll ask Tucker when he joins us. Tucker, the writer. Uh, but that was a great episode, a very emotional episode. We shot that. That was shot on green screen. Uh, I'll put up a photo of that, um, that back of the car scene that all was shot on the sound stage. And I mentioned that because when I said we shot on stage five, um, on Everett's Raymond, a lot of people wrote in, that's not that I said that's not true, but they said, how is that possible? Because you went to so many locations. Well, you do it with green screen or you do leave the sound stage, but very seldom on Raymond would you leave the sound stage. Um, and yes, season one, so... So season one, uh, someone asked the question, uh, did you switch sound stages? So we switched studios. So the first year of Everless Raymond, it was not really, uh, CBS wasn't betting a lot of money on the show. It really was a dark horse. And so we were a low budget show. The pilot itself was something called a presentation pilot, which means basically they're spending a lot less money on the pilot than they would on, at that time, the pilot with Ted Danson or the pilot with Bill Cosby, they got a lot of the money. So Everett's Raymond didn't get a lot of money. Uh, and so we shot on a soundstage at Hollywood Center Studios, which is now called Sunset Las Palmas Studios. And we were on stage 3-8. And next to us was the original I Love Lucy stage. And there's a plaque on the wall of that uh, soundstage, and I, if you watched last week, David Wilde and I were talking about Desi Arnaz really invented the format of the four camera shoot on film, and so it was very exciting to see that history uh, on, on that soundstage. And you can still go there, I don't know that they have tours, but you can see if you go to Hollywood Center Studios, you can see if you look at the soundstage from the street, you can see the entrance that's cut out where it said Desi Lu Productions, and you can find old footage of people going into that stage, and it's been spackled over, but you can see the history there of that soundstage. And a little bit of trivia from that stage, from that uh, studio, 
that's where they filmed all of the Green Acres, um, Petticoat Junction, all of those, and they shared some of the outdoor sets for those three. Uh, there was one other episode, which maybe someone will help me with, but they were all these kind of country comedies. And it was great because they, uh, they were able to take advantage of that. The downside is when they got canceled, all the shows got canceled in one day. So, um, did Ray take the wrong twin to the doctor in real life? I don't believe he did. No. Uh, Ray is a very good father. Uh, is it possible? Uh, uh, and we'll ask Ray when he joins us, but uh, no, I don't think so. Um, let's see. Yes. Such great questions. Sorry, I'm just scrolling through because I'm thinking I'm going to have some of the writers on and you know, one of the problems, we'll have Ray on, but we talked about this before. Ray doesn't have Instagram. Ray doesn't do any social media. So I have to have him go on uh, his, one of his kids, and then we'll, we'll do that. We'll ask him all those questions. Yeah, the paint, it comes up a lot. The paint that spray painted Marie, um, that, I'll, I'll ask Rhonda, our props person, um, I don't think, I, I'm 99% sure it wasn't milk. I'm pretty sure it was just water with food coloring uh, on it. And we just did one take of that. That was a great episode. That was a, uh, an outside episode uh, written by the Scott Buck, who also wrote the HBO series Rome, uh, which is very, hello, Philip Dobard. So... Yes, so Frank, um, uh, Frank, how did Frank fall down the stairs? Uh, there was a, uh, and I'm, I'm going to just stop for a second. I'm sharing all of this with you because uh, I'm hoping it's interesting, obviously, to some people. But uh, I mentioned before, I was nostalgic for a lot of old shows, and I wish there was more history of that show. So that's a big reason why I'm doing it. And off of how did Frank fall down the stairs, when I asked people uh, if they remember how we pulled off that stunt, um, nobody could remember. And unfortunately, Peter is no longer with us, but I will get an answer to that. I mean, he did it live in front of the studio audience, and I believe he fell onto a mattress. Uh, and we were very worried that because it was a real... Um, it was a real, uh, you know, fall. He had to take a real fall. And so you don't want your actor, obviously, to get hurt. And Peter was no spring chicken. But he did that live in front of the audience. And I believe it was a mattress. But that, that portion of the steps. And I might have photos of it. I'll have to look um, now. Uh, yes, yeah, so Car uh, uh, am I still writing now for other shows? Uh, so I've written for other shows I just finished writing an animated series for Lego, an animated series for another um, another company. Uh, I often, uh, I'll help Ray when he's doing a movie. If you guys saw The Big Sick, I helped on that. I'll help with coming up with funny lines, etc., and doing a lot of other projects, which I don't want to bore people with. Um, yes, excellent. Boy, That this is a true fan. Is it Leo? Johnny showed up as a cable repair guy before the character Johnny. Yes, I, I talked about that before. And John Manfalotti is a friend of Ray's from the improv uh, back in New York. And he wanted to have him uh, on the show. And so the character of Johnny wasn't established yet. So there was a, they needed a guy to play a cable guy. And so Ray cast his friend Johnny, who ended up being uh, a pivotal part of Ray's other series, Men of a Certain Age. Has anybody seen Men of a Certain Age? Uh, I believe it's now, uh, it's streaming on a new network, and I can't remember which network it was. But when we have Mike Royce on, uh, we'll have him, uh, uh, he, can, he can share with us uh, how that, or where, where it is now. Here, I'm putting up my phone here so I can also look at some of these messages. Uh, yes, Garvin, the extras. Yeah, how do, we, how do you find, not the extras, but the other cast members? How do you find those other cast members? Uh, that Lisa Miller-Katz, who we'll also have on, she uh, is the casting director. So what she would do 
you would write a script and then it would be, okay, Frank's friends. And so she would say, you know, what, 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 what is the character description? You know, Phil would say what the character description is. Then she would, she would um, field, uh, and it depended on the level. If it was a high profile cast, you know, guest cast, it's people that you know. So she would throw out names. What about this, Phil? What about that? For example, if you remember Turkey or Fish, there's an old character actor named Phil Leeds, and he looks like <laughs> he's a very funny looking character actor. I think I put up a picture of Phil and Phil Leeds uh, on there. I think he, when he opened the door, he said, that fish smell, it's like a punch in the face, something like that. So in the business, you know those character actors. So uh, I'm uh, on a lot of those, like the guy that goes, Ray, oh, Ray's here, ha <laughs> ha. Uh, you know who that is. That's Len Lesser. And so Ray, you know, uh, Lisa Miller, the uh, casting person would say, Phil, what about, what about him? What about Len Lesser for that part? Oh, that would be good. And sometimes they would read and sometimes, uh, uh, sorry, sometimes the actor would have to come in and read even if they were somewhat established. I remember being, there was a script I wrote and when you wrote the script, you would be in on casting along with Phil and you would sit there and the people would come in. I remember there was a guy who was in the movie Dirty Harry came in to read the part of the doctor. Uh, there was Dr. Sundrum that we put in one of the episodes. I think Ray, Kevin James and I wrote that episode. And I remember thinking, wow, this guy was in Dirty Harry, which is pretty impressive. Um, yeah, so how did Phil and Ray get their dads to participate? Well. I think it's more how, how could Phil keep his father from participating? Uh, Phil's father is a great, great ham. He loves to tell jokes. Um, and so I think he was very, very happy to be a part of the show. And oddly, uh, and Ray's father, I think, had no problem. But I think Phil's father was much more uh, enthusiastic about being on the show. I think Phil, Ray's father could, Ray's father Albert, could leave it, take it or leave it. He wasn't really you know, that gung-ho. Now, I think we mentioned this, that Ray's mother was a, um, the, I want to say, the youngest Juilliard piano, concert piano graduate. And yet she, I think, had no desire to be on the show. And I don't know, when Phil's on, I'll ask, um, uh, I'll ask him about his mother being on the show. But I, knowing Phil's mother, uh, I don't know that she would have wanted to be on the show. So, um, yeah. Uh, you know, well, how do you find extras? So extras are, there's a company that provides extras. Sometimes you could have your friends and family be extras. Now, what they're looking for on the as an extra, and Phil used to be this, an extra's background to, you know, when you look at, uh, if you're making a student film, for anyone who's watching and wants to make a student film, you, one of the things that you can tell with a real production versus a student film is the background, the extras, the feeling. If it feels like you're in an empty room, then uh, that's usually, you know, not, that's usually the sign of a production unless you're looking for that effect. But the extras, and this is the reason I bring it up, is the important thing about the extras, and, and, and I'm sure every showrunner, but sometimes we'd be filming and you go, the extra is trying to be noticed. And the most important thing of being an extra is don't get noticed. But it's your chance in the spotlight. So you might see someone, they're way back here on the stands in an episode. And all of a sudden, they're, they're doing something that draws attention to them. And so the Phil will say, can we switch out that extra? And so the extra who was getting all of his attention is now no longer seen on camera. Not to be mean. Not that Phil's being mean, but you don't, you as the viewer don't go, there's a guy wearing a big funny hat and, you know, a yellow shirt and I can, you know, uh, he's taking me out of it. So that's how you find the, uh, the extras. Yeah. Um, yeah. How close did Maggie Wheeler get <clears throat> to play Deborah? I think um, Phil loved her. I think everybody loved her uh, for the part of Deborah, but I think when Patty Heaton read, I mean, we'll ask this to, to Phil, because Phil obviously put her on the show. 
um, eventually uh, as Linda. But I, I don't know that anyone was opposed to Maggie other than the network executives who I don't know that they were necessarily opposed to Maggie either because Maggie's so obviously, I don't have to say this, but so funny and so talented. Um, but I think Patty Heaton just hit such a home run and it was, it maybe it felt more like, you know, um, Maggie can feel, uh, very similar to Ray. And so the, the, um, the similarity might have hurt that contrast. And, you know, uh, Patty Heaton is really one of a kind in her ability to uh, deliver serious, be put upon, um, uh, and, she, you know, she was the perfect foil. So we'll find out from Ray, from Phil, if there was somebody that said, no way, there's no way that, uh, 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 but I don't think anybody objected to, to, to Maggie Wheeler in a big way. So, um, yeah, so was the actor, great question, great question. Was the actor who played Cousin Gerard friends with Ray? So um, Fred Stoller is a comedian from New York who looked like Ray and sounded like Ray. So Ray recounts a story, and we'll ask him about it when he's on. Ray was doing a show at the comic strip, which was on the Upper East Side of New York. And Fred Stoller was also on the show. And so Fred Stoller went up first, and Ray was just waiting in the lobby. And an audience member came out to go to the bathroom or something and said, you were great. I loved you, and Ray hadn't been on yet. He thought it was Fred. He thought he was, he thought Ray was Fred Stoller. So Fred Ray did know Fred, and when that when cousin Gerard came up, we're like, oh, it has to be Fred. He is the perfect you know he is the perfect foil you know for them. Yes, the older friends were phenomenal. Um, yes, okay, that's the same question. Great. Great. Sorry, I'm just, I'm skimming through these as quickly as I can. Yes, Maggie. Uh, what happened to the character Nemo? Oh, that's a very good question. So uh, Nemo, the character that played Nemo, so a little trivia, Nemo was the name of Ray's dog and in real life. And so he named the pizzeria after him. But in the series, they named the pizzeria after a guy named Nemo. And... About, I want to say, b before um, David Praval came over from Italy and took over Nemo's, um, the actor, uh, he could no longer, he, he, he basically fell ill. And he was, um, he was replaced. And I don't think there was a lag. Uh, uh, sorry, I don't think we had an episode and he couldn't make it. I think he just could no longer, he, he was not well. And then... We just didn't feature Nemo because we knew we didn't have Nemo. And then that Italy episode happened. So that's what happened to him in real life. Um, yes. So did Monica have to read for her part? We should ask, we should ask, um, we should ask Lily. Yeah. Um, so Monica did not have to, oh, let me see this. Okay. This is perfect timing. Who will answer this? Let's see. Um, oh, hello. Uh, hi, Tom. Really? Oh, oh, hi. All right. I'm using my mom's phone because she can't come. Yeah. But I I'm here to answer her. questions for her. Yeah. So now, uh, uh, Lily, this is perfect timing. Uh, uh, as you know, I've known you since the day you were born. Okay, That's true. so we go back a while. So the question yes. just came up. It's a good mm -hmm. thing I noticed that you requested. The, 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 the question that just came up is, did your mother have to read for the part? And I know huh. the answer. Do yeah, you know the answer? so, well, I think I do. Should I say my answer and then we'll find yeah, out? fire away. There's no prize. Um, There's no prizes. So a lot of people think that it was Phil's idea to put her in the show and stuff like that. But it was actually Steve Scrovan thought of it um, to have a character that kind of embodied Monica and her personality and everything. Um, but I don't think she read for it. I think it was a, they didn't they like write it for, no, wrong. 
No, you're, you're, I, I'm smiling. By the way, Lily, are you, did you go to the portion of your house with the worst internet you could find? Oh, is it um, really bad? Well, my, my dad's on a Zoom thing and my mom is doing a thing. Uh, these are is problems. it really bad? You look like an aberration, but that's all right. Um, oh. <laughs> so, no swearing. Lady. Yeah, <laughs> I, I did it. I just did my Irish version. <laughs> yeah, so what happened, it was it was an episode called How's Handsome, and Steve Scroban, who is one of the writers, who's also not on Instagram. How's han who's handsome? Yeah, who's handsome? Oh, I thought you said how's handsome. Well, that's enough. How's handsome? How's handsome? How's your boyfriend? <laughs> um, so, uh, Scro yeah, Steve Scroban said, Phil, you know who would be perfect for this role is mm -hmm. Monica. And, but do yeah. you know what that means, Lily? That means if she gets Pretty cast thing. in the part, that means she has to see, okay? She has to see her husband at home and then at work. It's setting up a bad, it's a bad precedent. Um, yeah, Lily, some complaints on, about Tom, not being able to Everybody's, see. I know. All right, Lily is frozen in time. Good. No, yes, I hear. I hear you, but you're you're frozen. Um, Lily. Yes. What if I sent a check Am I still over frozen? There? You no, know, you're you're you're. What if I just sent a check over there to get you better internet? Would that? Would you appreciate that <laughs> in any way? I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Um. Yeah. Is it still really um, bad? Should I leave? Those are two separate questions. Your, and no. Uh, no, I always love seeing you, Lily. I, why don't you stop by every single time? It is, I, I do, here, let me take a, let me see if wow. I can take a screen grab. Maybe someone, and I'll send it to you so you see what everybody's suffering through. So for everybody, this is Monica's daughter, Lily Rosenthal. She's yes. with Lily. I mean, Lily's with Monica and Phil right now, and they are taking yeah, up they're... all of their bandwidth. Yeah, yes. they're taking all of their bandwidth up. Uh, and so, by the way, Lily, this is a question for you. Why, uh, and for some people who are just joining, my name is Tom and I wrote on the show for nine years. Um, the, you, were you ever in an episode? Oh, let's see. I was like in the background for a few, but my favorite um, little thing that I got to do was there's an episode where they go to an ice rink or something and I am sitting next to Brad, I think, and I'm clapping and I go yay Snoopy that's my big claim to fame oh okay yeah uh, yeah no that was I that was a little piece of trivia you know uh, Ma, uh, uh, Lily I yeah. call you your mother because I know it's all right it says uh, Monica up there so it's fine yeah um, so Lily yes the uh, your brother was featured in the episode <gasps> with. Um, I see what I look Peter like Boyle. now. It's horrible. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, where is Frank it still bad? Yesterday. It's still bad, Lily. Um, yes, someone made the joke. Stop feeding Phil and get better internet. So, um, the <laughs> the episode where Peter, where Frank gives out condoms at Halloween, <laughs> I believe Ben is there at the door. Yes, he's so cute. Oh my god. During one of the um the, one of the outtakes, he's standing there and they they told Peter, give him more candy, like put more candy in his bag. And little Ben like looks up at Peter, he goes, I think I have enough and walks away. <laughs> it's so <laughs> cute. Oh, that's funny. Um uh, oh, that is funny. Yeah, which was which was good. We'll look for that. Um, uh, Lily, the yeah, oh, sorry, I'm reading a question here just because. I'm going upstairs. Okay, they had better reception so on the first better. moon landing. I. <laughs> um, someone asked, did they have to wipe down the floor after Patty dropped the turkey? Yes. They did. They and it's were... actually, she slipped one more time than she was supposed to. And that was a real slide. A real slide, yeah. 
Uh, we're going to talk to Patty uh, about her new book. Uh, oh, good. Book. Yes. Second act. Your second act. My second act. Second yes. act. Yes. Um, Lily, here's a question for you. Yeah. Did you get to hang out on the set with the cast? You know. I did. Lily, but you yeah. could just mm -hmm. walk to my house and get better internet. And Is it still bad? No, it's better. Okay. okay. So oh. talk about hanging out with the cast. Because I did put up a picture of you during a notes session. I actually, I see also, oh my God, this is funny. This is exactly what you were just talking about. This scene, you see those? Yep, there's Peter That's Boyle on the left and, and your brother That's a, as a fireman. Again, he wasn't yeah. really a fireman, it was Halloween. No. <laughs> and okay. he, This, yeah. by the way, this photo was hanging in the um, hair and makeup department. Do you remember that, Tom? Yes. That's hanging. That's li hold, hold, show, point out you, Lily. That's me. Yeah. Yes. And this, Tom, I think you took this not. photo. I'm just showing everyone around the house. Ah. Yes, and that's a. Here's Phil's chair. Oh, from the Phil show. Rosenthal's chair. Nice. Yeah. And, and I think my bear. mom's is over there. I'm fully just welcoming people yeah. into the home. But there you go. These, we yeah, saw yeah. the chairs. How fun. Yeah. Okay. Um, what did you ask me? I got, I, I have ADD. I can't, I can't focus. <laughs> All right, Lily, we need you to find a chair or everyone's going to get car sick. Sorry, I'm seated. Yeah. Um, did I hang out with the cast? Was that the question? Yeah. Do you remember hanging? I mean, I know you did because I have photos of you hanging on your father's. Uh, I have a picture of you during the note session, during filming, holding on to your father's leg. Yeah, which... very annoying. That's a, it's a very annoying thing to do when someone is trying to focus. Yes. I think it's, um, I think it's uh, violating some child labor law. But yes, you were there. <laughs> but... Yeah. So I got to go um, after school most days. And it was so fun. You just got to run around be with everybody. I spent most of my time with Ali Romano. She right. she and I hung out a lot. But I was I was roughly the same age as the twins. So Small. I would hang out with them. They had school. They had the teacher that would come and teach them on set. Sometimes I'd hang out with them during that. Yeah. That was fun. Uh, Madeline was like a cool big sister. Same yeah. with Ali. It was really fun. Yeah. I love being in the makeup hair and makeup department. Whenever my mom, she she always says that I was never so nice to her um, than when she got married on the show because she was all, she was in so much makeup, like her hair was all done and she was in this amazing wedding dress that I found recently in storage. It's so beautiful. Um, but yeah, I uh, loved the glam side of it. Yeah, and Lily, I think we should say, we should go back and give credit to your father and Ray for setting a friendly, family-friendly oh. tone on the set. Oh, my God. Every, there was always, the Matt, Greg, and Joe, they were always there. All the kids were always welcome to, like, come and hang out. There was always food, so many snacks. It was amazing. Yeah, and I think um, it's a, I'm just saying it's a function of the show was a hit, but also your father and Ray had everything under control. Yes. And so... It Absolutely. was, there was no chaos or panic or how are we going to fix this or anything. So that lends a lot to itself. Yeah. Uh, Kendi, uh, is it true that Robert calls Ray Cubby often out of love? Does that mean, <laughs> I mean, Ray, you know, what's funny? Ray. Uh, yes. Brad, what's funny about Ray? Tom? <laughs> no, Brad has a nickname <laughs> for Ray. That's just fine. And I said, Ray, how did Brad give you that nickname in real life? And yeah. uh, we'll wait for Brad. We'll wait for Brad to come Yeah, wait for Brad. Say it. Yeah. Uh, yes, you look so much like your mom. Uh, do you ever hang out with Maddie Sweeten? Well, she's... She, I don't. Not, not really, but not because... Yeah. I don't, you don't know wait. where... I don't know where she lives. I don't think it's that close by for some reason. But um, she's very sweet. We're Facebook friends, if that means anything to yeah. anybody. <laughs> I, I haven't seen, I don't, I think, yes. The answer is, I don't know where Maddie lives. I think she might live. Uh, Let's give out her address. 
Yeah, no, <laughs> let's find out. No, we'll have her on. Yeah, why doesn't Ray Romano have social media? Oh, well, that's everybody wants to know that. Question. I've tried to convince Ray. No, to do that, social no, media. Absolutely not. Ray ten will years not ago. Enjoy well, Lily and media. everybody watching. Yeah, there is priceless footage because Ray had a website early on. Early on. I mean, very early, he was like, I got to do a website. And so we filmed all of this stuff for his website. I have footage of, here's the writer. Ray's like, this is the writer's room. Here's Phil. Here's this guy. Here's this guy. He would I play. I see it. Yes, he would play practical jokes on Brad. He would knock on Brad's door and hide from him. And so all this stuff. And then nothing. So he, Ray's a very private person. And so he, private. Yeah. So, so, so private. He does not need social media to like show everyone where he is, <laughs> what he's doing. That's unlike Ray's you, first really. nightmare. Unlike you. Yeah, showing, unlike me. Who's showing, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> but we've tried to convince Ray. So, um, yeah. When will Brad and Patty be on? I'll give you those dates when they're going to be on. Um, the And I think uh, you, you do hang out with Allie, but I think also... Here, for this will be interesting because I don't usually put up pictures, but your father would have a party and Ray would have a party every summer and we would the see Patty. Party. Yeah, we see Patty. Well, uh, we also had the the kids of Raymond party every year while we were shooting. That was like the kids. And then we had the backpack event where the whole cast and crew would come and we'd do this you, like So there's a charity. Thing. That's yeah. a great thing. I'm going to put up a picture of that. So. We had a, uh, a charity. We uh, I don't know who did Donna Stamps started or I think Donna Stamps and Donna Stamps was our yeah. set decorator. I want to say it gets confused. There's a set designer, set decorator. There's all kinds, but we'll have Donna on as well. The kids of Raymond. There would be a charity day where we assembled these backpacks and put them together for charity. And so all of the Raymond people would get together on a soundstage at Warner Brothers, and we had this assembly line. And I mean, it was a oh, lot of work. It was so fun. You'd pack these backpacks for kids that, you know, couldn't th get their their stuff for, right before school started. And then, of course, because it's Phil, we would always have, like, an amazing picnic situation afterwards. And it was just a whole day of, like, you're doing good, but then you also get to be with all your friends. And it was yeah. so and it fun. Con it continued after the series ended. Yeah. So. It actually went on for a little bit and then it ended and I was like 15 and I was like can we please do one more backpack event do you remember that it was like seven years ago or something we did another one I'm sure I was there and took photos you were there and you did take photos it was um, great yeah so Aaron Champion helped me a lot with that Aaron Champion worked on the show she's Phil works with Phil now to this yep. day yeah and the uh uh, she was, I think, 20 when she started on the show. Uh, mm -hmm. And so she has been there when, since the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did, did all the all... actors' families join? By the way, let me, I, did all the actors' families go uh, join the shooting in Italy? I, I'm going to have to find that out. I well, don't... we were there. We went. Uh, before everybody came, we went to Italy and, like, kind of, yeah, we were scouting and everything with Phil. Yeah. And then... Then we went back and you guys all went. So no, I don't think the families were there during the actual shooting, but we went beforehand. I yeah. feel like we also went with Mark and Carmen. Mark Taylor. Mark Taylor and Carmen. So uh, Carmen uh, is a very close friend of Patricia Patty. Eaton's. Yeah, and she mentions her in her first book and you'll I'll put really? up pictures of Carmen. Yeah, uh, yeah. love Carmen. Uh, uh, and Mark Taylor was an executive for HBO. Oh, my God. I love Mark Taylor so We're... much. It's so wonderful. But, yes, I don't remember, honestly. What you know what? We'll, I'll show. have Mark Taylor on as well. we'll have Please have Mark on. Taylor on. This is, a, this, is a, uh, um, this is just a general question for people. Uh, I know Lily is starting to bore people a little bit with these long stories. But, oh. uh, and the truth is, Lily and I are very good friends. And uh, she makes fun of me more than I do of her. But I know That's... we want to talk to Brad and Patty. But is this interesting, Lily? This is really the question. 
Is it he interesting is. to have the person who did the props and the person who made the food and the person who designed the set? Is that interesting to people, do you think? I I would be interested, um, but I don't. I don't know. A lot of the t a lot of the times, people are mostly interested with the actors in a show. That's who gets the most hype. Um, yes. But I don't know. Like if you're talking to a, someone who's interested in making television, or you know, going into the industry in any way, maybe they'd be interested. I feel like you should do a poll and ask people what they want to see. You know, uh, I'm getting a lot of yeses. Yes, we, it would uh, be. Yes. So, uh, uh, yes, I, I, and it's a matter of, here's the thing. If you know the phrase, if you get too inside baseball, you just, people's eyes glaze over. So even talking about the writing process, I gave a very quick summary and some people want to hear it slowed down. Yeah. Oh. Who did, yeah. Who made the food? The prop. So the props person was responsible for the food. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and I'll bring her on. That's Rhonda, also not on Instagram. And they uh, made the um, the where's lunch at the end, the plate that comes right. from where's lunch. Yep. They always did that as well. Yeah, yeah. So the cakes, yeah, I want to find out who made the cakes. That's a very good question. The cakes? What does that mean? Oh. So there was always a chocolate cake that I think we got double chocolate. And Rhonda told me, Rhonda, Rhonda Robinson is, was our props person who also worked on Who's the Boss and Community and the Gilmore Girls. And she has um, told me in the past about it. It was delicious cake. Remember, there's one thing where they're eating and Robert falls. He's like, save yourselves. That <laughs> yeah, I love cake. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything, anything Brad does is just so funny. We were watching um, The Last Laugh, which is like a documentary about the last season and everything. And we just there's this whole section on brad's riffs and it's so funny <laughs> oh i highly recommend it if anybody but, has not seen it yeah the last laugh documentary you're talking about uh someone yeah. asked this long before uh do patty did patty and doris get along everybody in the cast got along there was no riff and i'm going to put up a picture lily i don't know if you remember <laughs> there was a inquirer and in the inquirer the front page is why the cast hated Raymond, why the Everose Raymond cast hated Raymond. And Ray's what? reading the magazine. I took a picture of him reading it smiling because he's reading through it. And it's just so That's funny to read. hilarious. Because the Inquirer doesn't care what they, um, you know, what they publish. But as a reader, even for us, as people who kind of know at least a little bit more yeah. than the general public, at least about Everose Raymond, you're like, do they hate each other? Like, does, does David Schwimmer not like uh, Courtney? Oh. Hill? I don't know. I know. There is there is often uh, drama. I mean, there was all that stuff that came out about the people from, I want to say Sex of the City, like, not getting along. But. And was that, that true? Couldn't, I don't know. I have no idea. See, like, so, that's. But people like hearing set drama. But there was, there wasn't drama for rain. Like. Zero. years later anybody would have a party everybody was there like yeah and, you know and i don't know if you watched where we were talking about david wild talk, speaking with david wild but i had a few, couple of people who i worked with and um they're on development and yeah to get a little bit inside baseball most of the year people are trying to develop shows like your father for example right. very successful showrunner he has a hit show when he has to pitch a show, he goes in and pitches to a development person and says, I have the next great idea. It's going to be just like Everett's Raymond, only better. And they go, <laughs> eh, we don't care. And so that development person, I was talking yes. to them, and they worked on a series, and they said they didn't have enough people who liked each other to have a Christmas party because they couldn't be in the same room together. And I was like, oh, that's kind of the opposite. Of, that's uh, so sad i know it's very I can't sad. even imagine that that is so crazy really the the raymond family is such a huge part of our lives my family i i know yours too it's just that is such a huge chapter of our lives that i can't imagine not remaining close with everybody that was involved you know you, yeah and that's i think it's it bodes well to have friends and it and it just in general in life and to have gone through such a very intense experience um, Lily, is there anything that's embarrassing 
that when you watch the show and you're like, I can't believe my mother acted oh, that I way. Can't, I can't handle the, I don't know if it's embarrassing, but I genuinely cannot handle the episode where she yells at Ray. Um, it's, she says it's her biggest episode. Um, Sister-in-law. Yes. And Ray doesn't like Amy or something and says something about her and yeah. she yells at him and I could not as a kid I could not handle watching uh, that uh, oh as a child because uh -huh. she was yelling at you so much it reminded you of your exactly no um, but I was like that's the guy that I why are you yelling at right it just did not make sense register. to me oh as and a child could, yeah. yeah by the way Marie sculpture a lot of questions about Marie sculpture um that oh I god that's <laughs> Doris had one. <laughs> Doris had one of them, and I don't know and know what happened after she passed. I don't know who has that sculpture. I assume her son does still, and I don't know who has the second one. We don't, I, for sure. <laughs> yes. Somewhere, uh, I, I do have a picture of me standing next to it, and it's very funny because we saw it on the episode, and then we we on the on the stage never saw it again until the end of the series. Mm -hmm. And someone someone wrote Lady Chatterley. Ray says Amy talks too much. That's what happened in that episode. Okay, continue. Yes, Sorry. Yes. Don't. They're right. Lily, if you ever want an answer, ask these fans because they're phenomenal. Yeah. Oh and, my God, it's so cool. Yeah, and I feel I feel bad because uh, I'm trying to talk to Tucker and oh, everybody. I mean, not trying to talk to him. I'll ask him. I asked Ray. I saw Ray a few weeks ago, and I someone asked this question. In the Christmas episode, in, uh, I wrote a Christmas episode with the Jazz Records, and mm -hmm. Ray disappears behind the clothesline. He comes out with, with Marie's bra on his back, okay? Giant bra, and he goes in, and then Deborah, in the perfect psychological thing, gives it back to Marie, and she's like, oh, it's not really a style I would wear. <laughs> um, yes, there was a backup sculpture. There were two, yes. Um, but I said, Ray, do you remember, someone asked, do you, how, did that, how, how did that end up on his shirt? on the back of his shirt, you know, because- Yeah, because he's clipping? walking, yeah. I asked Ray, zero recollection. And I'm like, okay, so now I have to ask Wardrobe. I asked Lisa Helfrich, who is our line producer, zero rec, nobody remembers. And I'm like, as the years go by, it's gonna be less and less. So it's- Yeah, yes. you gotta get everyone so, now before yeah, it's but too I mean, late. But these fans are phenomenal because- they It's have so watched, awesome. Yeah, they have watched these episodes. All right, Lily, I only, yeah, you're you're gonna run out of time. I was only hoping to talk to you for a few seconds. I know, and, and for some reason, I felt the need to talk to you more. It was the perfect timing because there was that question about your mother. Did she have to read to audition? It would have been here. Let's put it this way. Yes. If your mother had to read and didn't get the part, your would have father's been, life would have been uncomfortable for not. Very. Very yeah. uncomfortable. And by the way, uh, you know, we'll save it for next time. I want to hear about times when your mother's been recognized out of the blue and people go, how do I know you? It's Why do so I know cute. You? It's so cute. Oh, my God. We'll talk about it yeah. next time with her. She'll tell uh, you. Yes. All right, Lily, um, thank you so much. Tell thank your you. mother and father I said hello. Oh, my God, I will. They're going to yeah. be so excited to hear from you. <laughs> Excellent. Bye, Tom. Bye, everybody. Right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next Sunday.